welcome to another edition of Teresa's Kitchen. Today, we're going to prepare you a Mediterranean-type meal. Now, look, most of you may think like sardines are a down-market product. I'm afraid not. If you look at good food today, <coughs> most of the good food you get today is really basic sort of farm-type, grandmother-type meals and items which have become sort of passé, which have become out of fashion, while well, this, in my books, remains top on the list. Still fashionable, still great, still tasty, wholesome, you know, diverse in flavors, and you can do affordable, indeed, very affordable, okay? And certainly not a down market product. Don't downgrade this product. Sardines are good for you, they're good for your kids, they're good for your friends, they're good for everyone. I love them. And I prepare them a certain way. Before we go on to the way, I'll make them for you. I normally eat them in a sandwich, OK? Mashed up with onions, garlic, lime, chili, canny, 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 OK? Parsley. And I usually use Moroccan dried olives, which are Greek olives as well. Do we have some of those today? Now, those olives are special. It's not for everyone. But for me, it's the wax. Okay, but instead today we're going to prepare you a starter with this. It's going to be straight to the point, fast and refreshing. Okay, the other two meals we're going to prepare for you today is another also, you know, sardines are Mediterranean. Most all the sardines you buy here come from Morocco. Morocco is one of the largest or probably the largest exporter of sardines in the world. Okay, sardines are also very nice fresh, but we don't get fresh sardines here. What you do is you deep fry them whole. They're crunchy, they taste, and you can eat the whole thing with the head and all. But in the Gambia, we can only get them in cans for the moment, unless it's imported frozen, and we don't have that yet. A typically Mediterranean product, followed by another Mediterranean meal, which is the main course, stuffed peppers and stuffed tomato. We're going to stuff them with minced meat and rice. Absolutely delicious. And you eat that with a nice, beautiful loaf of bread. And then we're going to follow it with a very refreshing, one of my favorite desserts, which is very inexpensive, but really gets to the point, is yogurt with nuts and honey. A complete Mediterranean fare today. Very inexpensive, straight to the point, fast and delicious. So stay with us and let's move on to the first product. First of all, take one can of sardines. How much is a can of sardines, Oli, today? 15 dalasia. I remember when they used to be 50 bututs. But those were the days. So we take half an onion, put it into this bowl, OK, over here, half an onion. OK, a little bit of cani, not too much, because the cani gets too much. And Oli, I'm even afraid, how many garlics did you chop? OK, look, half an onion, cup cut into very small, tiny cubes, like chopped, all right? Just sufficient canny here. You see how the red dots are on that? And only cut one whole garlic. I think that's too much. I think we're going to take about a quarter of a garlic, no? OK. So over here, a little bit of olive oil into the bowl. OK, we'll put about three teaspoons of olive oil. Three teaspoons of olive oil. and then. We're going to put in a bit of lime, a whole lime, OK? Lime you need plenty of. So we'll put a whole lime in here, a whole lime. It's some Moroccan olives, OK? You take the olives and you peel them off and remove them. Now, some of you may not like this. These olives are not for everybody. They're, most shops sell them as Greek olives. Yeah, they're a dry type of olive. I love olives. Again, maybe something else that tells me something about my ancestry. OK? Throw some nice parsley in there. Remember, this parsley you can throw abundantly because it's fresh. OK? There you are. And it gives it a nice color as well. You see? Color, texture, flavor, all of that, huh? OK? Now, I think I'll throw in a little more cani. Oli, what do you say? Yeah, a little more cani. I'm going to put some black pepper, a little bit of black pepper, because black pepper also has flavor, OK? 
when it's not powdered. Okay, a little bit of black pepper, just for flavor. Okay, and even if you wanted, we can throw in some capers, Oli. Do you have some capers, Oli? Can I have some capers quickly, capers? Capers quickly. Mm. It's good stuff, very good stuff. Very, very good stuff. So now there are two limes instead of one. Okay. Uh, Oli. Sorry about that. We have two limes instead of one. Because it needs to be really citrusy. Eh? This product has got to be very citrusy. Can I have a small spoon there, please? Okay. Yeah, it needs to be very citrusy. So let's say two limes. This is reality TV, which means we do things on the spot. There's no cheating, there's no hiding. Everything is as it is, okay? So we had put one lime, and I tasted it. I didn't like the taste. I thought it needed a little bit more lime. And I'm going to pour in one teaspoon more of olive oil. Okay, so now we've put about three teaspoons of olive oil. Oli, have you got some capers for me? Uh, just give me a little bit of capers. Okay, I'm going to try this again. Mm. It's nice. Mm, I like this. I'm going to have it for breakfast. We'll have you take a pause after this, because I think I'm going to eat this for breakfast. Well, what I'm going to do is take the capers and put them on top. Over here, we have some of this stuff on toasted bread. Take some toasted bread. If you want, you can put it, all of this inside a little baguette. You know what they call senfour? You can buy senfour and just put this inside a senfour, like a sandwich, and eat it like that. You don't have to put it on toasted bread. We're only putting it on toasted bread because it acts uh, just so we can display it nicely on a plate as a starter. Okay, some caper, a little bit of caper, oops, on it. Oli, you got a plate for me? Yeah. All right, there we are. We put this here, one. And then I'm going to take another one here. Uh, okay, Oli, I think, wait a minute. I'm going to put this one under that. Okay, what I would do, Oli, as well, two things. Huh? I'll show you what else I would do. Okay, what I would do is I'll take this over here and I'll cut it in half. Now, whoever said that sardines were boring, look at this. This certainly doesn't look like sardines or product made from sardine. Uh, this is, uh, you know, sardine laid on this mixture we just made, layered on your, on your uh, toasted bread, and toasted bread squares cut again in half, along diagonally, making nice triangles that have been laid together like this. Enjoy it, bon appetit. Fatima, please try this for me. With a yeah. Of Take whichever you choose. This one, the crunchy one. Okay. Uh, I think I think you should take more. With yeah, with a bit of caper, okay. or so just take one. the caper and take the olive. And I'll put it on yeah, top and the top olive top. as well. Yeah, there. Yeah. And put it on top. You've got to have a, the the combination of flavors. Of it's all a combination about a combination of flavors, and ingredients. Nice. Very flavory. The lime adds a really nice taste. It's really fresh. I think a really good start for a really nice meal. Mm. Very flavorful. Very the lime gives it a very nice freshness. The caper, too. The caper as well. She thinks really it would be a great starter mm. for a very nice meal. No doubt. No doubt. Please go ahead. And do you feel like uh, an explosion in your mouth with a bursting of different, different ingredients and flavors going through? It is fiesta time now here. It's? Fiesta time. It's fiesta time. <laughs> There's a feast taking place, a bursting combination of flavors, a concussion of ingredients, fiesta, party, exactly. sublime. Thank you. Bye.
All right, now we're going to prepare over here uh, stuffed peppers and stuffed tomatoes. But what's going to happen is this. It's going to take, we have two ways of doing it. Some people just stuff the pepper as it is. Other people actually grill the pepper first. I like the taste of grilled pepper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grill the peppers before we stuff them. So these are all washed, Oli. We'll grill the peppers a little bit. What it does is it gives them a bit of flavor and it gives them some color as well, okay? Now what we're gonna do is take these tomatoes, okay, cut them. So we take this tomato, cut it like this, okay? Over here, there we are, okay? And then cut the top bits off, yeah? Then we're going to remove the little bit that's inside here, which is the pulp, you see, this tomato. There you are, I did this just so you see it, how it comes out, all right? I think we are ready, yeah? Now what we do is we take these peppers here, again, these very hot peppers, and be careful with the peppers because they're more delicate, huh? and they come, they're actually harder to work with because if you remove more than just this bit here that the stem attaches to, you will get, you will lose actually the, the structure, which means the pepper will just go plop. It won't have anything to hold it firm. So remove just this bit on top here. And they're very hot as well. I mean, I would suggest you let them cool, huh? but we don't have that time. So everything is out. You can see here. Wow, it's so hot, Oli. Huh? It's so hot. Can I have the minute, please? Can I have the cal calpers, those ones? As you can see here, look. Uh, it's all been... The odor, the smell of grilled peppers reminds me a little bit of my ancestry as well. Mm. This is delicious. Can you see inside? It's hollow. Yeah, okay, there you are. There we are. A little bit of olive oil in the pan. Oli, three garlics, please. Chop me three garlic. Okay, Ali, Monsieur Chef, Monsieur Boucher Ali, s'il te plaît, tu peux venir ici. Okay, now you should all be getting your kids to watch this program. And if they're below or under 12 years old, make sure you supervise them in the kitchen when they're cooking, because you don't want them causing any problems or having any accidents. All right, get your husbands to watch this show as well. Get your husbands to watch it and let them cook you a meal, all right? So it's for everybody, the children, the husband, the wife, everyone should be watching this show, okay? Now, our good old Mr. Ali here, has brought us a wonderful piece of 400 grams of mincemeat. 400 grams. 400 grams. Yeah. Ali is a very handsome man, isn't he? Look at that face, huh? <laughs> very good looking butcher we have here, don't you think so? Yeah. You agree with me, Karen? Yeah. Oh, definitely. We all think Ali is a handsome man. There you are. But we'll keep him away from the girls because he's married. There we are, Oli. Okay, Oli puts up 400 grams and how many spoons of rice? 400 grams of, uh, of minced meat, one tablespoon, two tablespoons of rice, enough? Four tablespoons of rice is her way, four tablespoons. Salt and pepper, about, there we are, some nice salt and pepper. Okay, olive oil, about two tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to put some cumin. You can buy cumin in the supermarkets, all right? I think about a pinch of cumin. Is that enough? I think a little more cumin. Okay. Mm, I love the smell of cumin. It's really nice. And of course, some paprika. Some beautiful paprika. 
about two pinches. You know, you have to go by your own measurements as well. You know, two pinches of paprika, two pinches of uh, cumin. Uh, onions, one or two, one whole onion. So we're gonna take a whole onion for Oli. All right, so what we've done here, we've put 400 grams of minced meat, six tablespoons of rice, one whole onion chopped, one whole garlic chopped, about two pinches, or you know, sp spice it as you wish with cumin and paprika. We've put about olive oil, maybe about two tablespoons of olive oil, and we put some salt and pepper, okay? So what you do is you take this and you sort of stuff it in to, into the pepper. Okay, and of course, you stuff it into the tomato as well. You know what I'm tempted to do, Oli? Whatever leftovers there are, we make meatballs out of them and put them in the oven. So it becomes an extra as well, huh? You see, as you can see today, with a sardine can that cost about 15 nalasi, we have made starters enough for six people, that was, huh? huh? So that comes to about 15 divided by six, about two delasi something per person. You can really entertain at home, invite people, have a nice meal, without really spending much money and without just serving the usual boring stuff, you know? It can be, take fairly inexpensive ingredients and use them instead to, in a very creative way, Okay, so now we have this pizza ready. Here you are. So put some breadcrumbs on top there now. Put a lot of breadcrumbs. Because the breadcrumb also acts as a seal to prevent the moisture from evaporating, you know? And it gives it a nice crunch at the end. Okay, so what we do next now a little bit of water in the pan. So what you have is a roasting and boiling effect. It's probably called steaming. It's the water that's evaporating from the heat that's evaporating. Let's say the moisture that's evaporating cooks it, like you're almost boiling it or steaming it. Okay, and then in the oven for about 15 minutes. Right. Now we make the sauce. Okay, four onions to go into the sauce. All right, as much onions as possible, as many onions as possible, because the onions give it moisture, and you need moisture for the sauce, okay? The onions also give it a sweetish flavor, and that goes very well with all the other herbs and ingredients in the cooking. Three cloves of garlic over here. The tomato sauce, okay, lots of tomatoes as well. Nice, beautiful plum tomatoes. Goes down very well. Okay, all right, so what we have here is we have our wonderful onions and garlic going into the pan. Okay, lots of onion, and don't forget as well, you know, once the onions cook, they reduce. So we have three cloves of garlic, not so oily, and uh, four onions, yeah? Don't forget now, four onions, three cloves of garlic, okay? in some olive oil. Olive oil is great for flavor. Now we're gonna chop our tomatoes and throw them in here. Meanwhile, I'm going to take some of this wonderful tomato paste. So I'm gonna mix about half a liter of water in here together with, uh, with this tomato paste. All right, always my standard, two tablespoons with about half a liter of water. All right, there we are. Okay, let's put the three tomatoes in there now, okay? Okay, so there, we've got all of this here together, and we're going to pour some of this wonderful tomato paste, okay? But I insist half a liter of water, but this bowl won't take all the half a liter of water, so I'm gonna pour them in bits over here. All right, a nice black pepper over here. Now, the right thing to do is to put in some oregano or some basil. 
but we're going to Moroccanize it a little bit. We're going to put some cumin powder and maybe some paprika, okay? All right? That's not really the way to do it, but you know, we're going to alter it a little bit. So we take some cumin here, a little bit of cumin, about a tablespoon of cumin again in there. That's about a tablespoon. And a definite tablespoon of paprika. A definite tablespoon of paprika goes in there. Uh, the sauce is about ready, and so is the stuffed pepper. But before we get there, I'm going to take you around, move you about 180 degrees to the right, to introduce to you some space travelers who've just come in from space, the galaxy crew bursting with sound, exploding in the ears with fusion. Yeah, the galaxy sound. In the house today, live and direct. Now we're going to prepare our tomato sauce here, which we're going to bring into the bottom of, of the dish here. Oli, then we bring our peppers out, okay, from the oven. Wow, this is nice. It's smelling good. Really good stuff. Hooray, already over here. So we're going to take our tomato out of the oven, okay? Place it like here in the middle. Here we've got our beautifully stuffed peppers and tomatoes lying on a bed of nice tomato sauce. Uh, stuffed with minced beef and rice, with some breadcrumbs on top to give it a crunch. Enjoy your meal. Bon appétit. So let's go. One, two, three. Hooray. All right. There we are. Huh? Yeah, here. Here. There you are. Huh? There you are. Oops. There you are. I think it's going down well, huh? So, what? I can't talk at the moment. You can't talk. Can't he moment. can't talk at the moment. Is it because it's so good or is it because your mouth's full? It's full. My mouth is full and it's so good. All right, here we're going to prepare you a nice uh, fresh yogurt uh, dessert. Very fresh, bursting again with freshness and flavor. Very easy. Fresh local yogurt available in any supermarket. Put some of this yogurt in here, like this, all right? Then we're going to take a little bit of honey, okay? A little bit of honey, and put the honey over here, okay? The honey is going to give it some, um, some color. Okay, so you take your honey and then just put it around like this. Then take some more yogurt. Okay, put it on top. So you're building layers. Yeah, we're building layers of yogurt and honey here. Okay, we can also put another layer of honey if we want, but I think that will be that will be really overdoing it. It'll get too sweet then. Okay. All right. Instead, we take these nuts, which we showed you how to make the last time. Take some cashew nuts and peanuts, but preferably cashew nuts. So wash them, soak them, dust them in sh icing sugar. Okay, coat them in icing sugar, and then put them in the oven to roast. Okay. About it'll take about 10, 15 minutes. Alfonso, how long did these ones take you? Five. Five minutes. Okay. The last time it took us about 15 minutes when Chef was doing it. Why it took so long, I don't know. But this one is about five minutes. Okay, there we are. And then we're ready. This dessert is ready to be served. Okay, we get a little plate over here, a napkin. Put a napkin on. Put this dessert on. Okay, take a little bit of nana. Uh, some nice nana, put it here and maybe one tiny raspberry, just to give it color. And uh, Karen, come and look at this. This is your traditional Greek yogurt dessert. 
Okay, here we've got our dessert, fresh yogurt, fresh local yogurt, uh, sandwiched in uh, or sandwiched in fresh local Gambian honey with some nice caramelized local cashew nuts, a local raspberry, and some nana. Enjoy your meal. Now, thank you for joining this other episode of Dries's Kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the sardines on toast, the wonderful stuffed peppers and tomatoes, and this excellent but very simple dessert with yogurt, fresh honey, and nuts. So now we're going to wrap up the show, literally wrap up the show, with our Galaxy team, who are going to give us a wrap to wrap it up. So guys, yeah, all right? Nice man. Let's go. Every day, every time, Galaxy crew, chipir, butcha shop, kunyu soh la fek, kunyu fi why? Oh, oh, why, why? Bye, bye.